Modern technology has given us a smaller television camera capable of providing live pictures from helicopters hovering overhead or the president far from home. The Minicam opens a window to the world around us. During this presentation, we'll explain the basic operation of the portable television camera and the portable video recorder. And we'll present some basics on picture composition. We begin with a look at the small lightweight television camera and some other pieces of portable TV equipment which make up the ENG EFP package. This small camera is used to shoot spot announcements, news, television drama, and more. The pictures may be looked at live or stored on videotape for later playback. When electronic gear is used in gathering news, it's called electronic journalism or electronic news gathering. In any event, the small TV camera and portable video recorder have revolutionized television production. It's a cost-effective way of producing material for display on the standard television set. ENG involves techniques used when we have little, if any, control over shooting conditions. The pictures and story are gathered as the event unfolds. EFP or electronic field production may use the same equipment, but in more controlled conditions. The shooting location and the action are sometimes surveyed and planned very carefully. In many cases, the entire script is written in advance of the shooting. EFP is the method normally used for shooting commercials or other informational type messages. The basic equipment package includes a portable camera, a portable video recorder, batteries or battery belt, an electrical power supply, a portable monitor to check audio and video playback in the field. Some cameras don't require a separate monitor as playback is possible through the camera's viewfinder. A tripod to mount the camera on and a portable lighting kit. The ENG EFP unit consists of the camera, a power source, and a TV screen type viewfinder that attaches to the camera. Power for the camera may also be provided by a rechargeable battery or battery belt that attaches to the camera. With all battery powered equipment, the power should be turned off when not in use to conserve energy for shooting. If AC power is available, an electrical adapter can be used, saving the battery for use at locations where battery power is the only energy source. Once the camera has power, you're ready to set up the portable video recorder. The recorder uses a separate rechargeable battery or AC adapter. In some systems, the camera and recorder can be powered by a single AC adapter. The power supply is connected to the recorder and it provides power to the recorder and camera. To insert the battery, remove the cover, connect the battery cable inside the housing and you have power. Now a cable is connected between the camera and the recorder. The multi-pin connecting cable between the camera and the recorder channels the camera video into the recorder. In some systems that same cable also feeds audio from the camera's built-in microphone into the recorder. The recorder has microphone inputs for two separate audio recording tracks. They're called Audio 1 and Audio 2. The primary audio, such as the narration or a reporter's stand-up, is recorded on Channel 1. The microphone used for the reporter or the interviewer is plugged into the Audio 1 input. On cameras with built-in microphones, natural sound that accompanies the various scenes is recorded on Channel 2. However, the camera's built-in microphone is not suitable for voice recording. The natural sound is mixed during the editing process with the primary audio. At this time, the audio channels are reversed, and here's why. Of the two audio recording tracks on the videotape, Audio 1 is recorded nearest the edge of the tape. Audio 2 is located more toward the center of the tape. The tape could become damaged slightly on the outside edge, causing a problem with the sound on Channel 1 audio. For protection, primary audio should always be transferred to Audio 2 during editing. Most recorders have an automatic volume or level control. The automatic mode may create a surging effect, bringing background noise up to full volume when the reporter stops talking. This effect can be avoided by setting the microphone volume levels manually. While the reporter or narrator talks into the microphone at normal loudness, 
The volume control is adjusted until the VU meter, which measures the recording volume, reaches maximum peaks of 100%. This is also called zero VU. The operator of the system should monitor the sound being recorded by plugging an earphone or headphone into the recorder. Listening while recording is the best way to do it, but you should always spot check the recording in the playback mode. The recorder is equipped with an audio output for monitoring. It's much better to discover a problem in the field where it can be corrected rather than back at the editing tank. Make sure the microphone used has either the correct size mail jack on the end of the cable or that a suitable adapter is available. The operator controls on portable video recorders are similar to those of most audio cassette recorders. The present system used most often for ENG and EFP work is the three-quarter inch pneumatic system. One hour is the maximum running time for a cassette used in a pneumatic system, but those used in the portable recorders are smaller and store only 18 or 20 minutes of information. To load a videotape recorder, insert the cassette into the recorder's tray. Close the tray and the machine is ready for head wrap. Head wrap is the automatic wrapping of the recording tape around the recorder's head assembly. When the play button or record and play buttons are depressed, the machine extracts the tape from inside the cassette and wraps it around the head assembly. When the stop button is depressed, the tape is unlaced or removed from the head assembly and returned to the cassette. Videotape, like audio recording tape, is covered with magnetic particles that allow for the storage of sound and pictures on the tape. The control track on the videotape serves the same purpose as sprocket holes on motion picture film. The tape's control track is a series of electronic pulses occurring at precise intervals to keep the tape running at a constant speed. Without a closely regulated tape speed, neither a proper recording nor the proper playback of the tape is possible. The two audio tracks run parallel along the tape, track one on the outside edge and audio track two on the inside. The video track occupies the center portion of the videotape. But the best equipment and the most expert knowledge are worthless to a camera operator if lighting conditions don't meet the camera's requirements. Some top-of-the-line cameras are capable of shooting in extremely low light conditions, but most require some artificial light in the form of a portable lighting kit for indoor work. And sometimes additional lighting will also be required outdoors. The temperature of the light worked with in television is measured in degrees Kelvin. For instance, a morning sunrise, the sky is red-orange. By midday, the color has changed as the blue light overrides the early morning red-orange tones. And at sunset, the reddish color returns and the color temperature changes again. The light from the sky casts the color on everything. Here are some examples of degrees Kelvin. A blue sky, 10,000. Bright yellow, 3,200. But it's only the temperature of the color of the light. A blue sky, for example, might read about 10,000 degrees Kelvin, but the actual air temperature might be below zero. Color temperature is important because it affects the color of the subject in the television picture. The color temperature of light can be measured with a special meter, but white balancing the camera eliminates the need for measurement. White balancing ensures that the camera records scenes while maintaining their natural colors. Cameras with automatic white balancing require only the push of a button, while others require a longer process. But most white balancing requires a white surface exposed to the same light you'll be shooting your story in. Also, be sure the built-in filter wheel is in the right position. Most cameras have filters for indoor and outdoor shooting built in. Be sure you're using the right one. The best advice is to white balance according to the camera manufacturer's operator's manual. And if white balancing is done while shooting outdoors in the early morning sunrise, remember white balancing will be needed again periodically as the natural light outdoors changes toward a different noonday temperature. When shooting outdoors in a shaded area, artificial light may need to be added to eliminate light facial shadows. A reflector can be used to bounce the natural sunlight onto the subject. Commercially made reflectors are available, or a homemade version can be made with aluminum foil. There is another important element in controlling the brightness of a scene. A 
Around the lens mount area of the camera is a ring with several numbers on it. The numbers represent f-stops. This measures how wide or how narrow the camera's iris opens when exposing the image to the camera's pickup tube on its way to the video recorder. Most cameras have an automatic iris control which automatically adjusts the size of the iris depending on the brightness of the scene. The iris can also be set manually. The manual iris control can be used when shooting a subject against a bright background. In this situation, the auto iris would adjust for the average amount of light in the scene. And if the background dominates the scene, the background will be perfectly exposed while the subject is dark. By using the manual iris, you can ensure proper exposure on the subject. To use the manual mode, set the iris to manual on the lens. Then open the f-stop ring until the picture you see gets so bright that it begins to bloom in bright areas. Then reduce the f-stop setting by one click. Most cameras have a built-in exposure meter. This will also help to tell you how far to open or close the iris. You'll also notice the word cap or C on the f-stop ring. In the cap position, the iris is closed and no image or light reaches the camera's pickup tube. And the camera also should always be physically capped when not in use. Keeping it capped can prevent possible camera damage. The best equipment in the world is of little value if its operator doesn't know how to use it properly. The camera operator is no exception. In addition to knowing the mechanical operation of the equipment, the camera operator must know about picture composition. We tend to look at an event as it unfolds and then shift our visual attention to any part of the action. In viewing the event on a television screen, we rely on the eyes of the camera operator to show us the individual aspects of the total event. A director or producer may control the shooting, but the eye of the camera operator makes the final choice of exactly what we see and how we see it. The desired picture is constructed by building the video space with what is seen through the lens of the camera and on the camera's viewfinder. The choices of what fills the video frame are virtually limitless, so much so that a decision must be made on what to use and what not to use. In addition to visual clarity while building the video space, essential picture area must also be considered. What is seen through the camera's viewfinder may not necessarily be what is seen on the television screen at home. 10 to 15 percent along the picture's border is electronically cropped as the image passes from the camera's electronic pickup tube to the display on the television screen. So when the shot is framed during composition, 10 to 15 percent more of the picture must be framed on all four edges in the camera's viewfinder. This compensates for the 10 to 15 percent loss of picture along the edges. Another decision has to be made on how large the subject will appear in the picture or what will be the field of view. In the early days of the movie industry, most directors followed a shot progression beginning with a wide shot or extreme long shot to establish the entire scene, since we instinctively first establish an overall view of a scene and then focus on individual aspects of it. Then the director might call for a long shot, a medium, and even an extreme close-up in order to move the viewer more into the action. Today we feel we don't need all those steps, but a combination of some of those shots is needed and should be used with good taste to establish the mood of the story being shot. The size of the image can be made more specific if we use natural cutoff lines. The full shot shows the subject from head to toe, while the knee shot frames from head to knees, the waist shot to the person's waist, and the bust shot from the head to the upper chest area. The term four shot means the shot contains four subjects. Likewise, the three shot designates three subjects. The two shot means two, and the one shot or single shot means the picture contains only one subject. Shooting over the shoulder adds depth to the picture and establishes a relationship between two individuals. An example is a reporter interviewing a subject where the camera shoots over the reporter's shoulder, catching the face of the person being interviewed. Camera angles include the normal angle, which shows the scene as we see it in real life, at about eye level. The high camera angle, which shoots down on the subject, this angle can make the subject appear to be smaller than it really is. The low camera angle looks up at the subject.
This can make the subject look taller and overpowering. The canted angle produces a shot that is unstable and can be exciting and dynamic. The camera is simply tilted slightly left or right to eliminate the 90 degree horizontal and vertical plane match. The subjective camera angle puts the camera in place of the subject. Such as a camera operator running with a camera allows the viewer to examine the scene through the eyes of a jogger. A moving subject can complicate the shooting but adds great momentum to the visual portion of the story. Movement toward or away from the camera can provide dynamic and forceful movement. Because the size of the subject increases or decreases, the moving subject also adds to the depth perspective of the shot. There can also be parallel or lateral movement. But such movement is not as exciting because image size remains the same. And when the camera is following a subject moving left or right, the subject should not be centered in the camera's viewfinder. Instead, provide more room in front of the subject in the direction of the movement. It's called lead room and eliminates the impression that the subject is being squeezed against a leading edge of the picture with a lot of empty space to the rear. The tighter the shot, the more difficult it is to properly follow the subject. And the looser the shot, the easier it is to follow. Shooting looser also reduces the visible camera shake. Picture composition is nothing more than the organization of the visual elements within the available video space. A shot that reflects good composition is unified. It channels the viewer's interest to the most important action in the scene. And it gives the viewer a pleasing picture that is easy and interesting to watch. Television is a two-dimensional image, so we have to create the illusion of a third dimension to make the picture more exciting and more lifelike. To add visual depth, camera shots should try to show a foreground, middle ground, and a background. Subjects should be shot from an angle rather than head on, and a background that has depth should be used rather than a flat neutral background. Whenever we view a scene, we unconsciously attempt to organize the various elements into some sort of unified grouping. There are several such grouping processes but we can put most of them into three major categories. The balance grouping tries to organize the elements into a symmetrical arrangement. One way to achieve a balanced picture is by placing the subject in the center of the picture. Another way is to shoot the subject off center, but have other subjects in view appear in symmetry with the main subject. An unbalanced grouping places the main subject off center and does not provide a counterbalancing element to equalize the picture. This provides an unstable image. The triangular grouping can utilize three or more subjects. The number is not as important as the placement of the objects. It can place objects on various depth planes, giving depth to the shot. The third major grouping is the foreground-background grouping. It arranges any number of subjects on two or more depth planes within the video space. The over-the-shoulder shot is a variation of the foreground-background grouping. The foreground treatment is another. Simply place an object, such as a table, in the foreground of the video space with the main subject to the rear. When framing a shot, be careful not to show a telephone pole growing out of the top of a subject's head or a portion of the background emerging from the subject's ear. And allow enough headroom at the top of the frame to compensate for the 10 to 15 percent border loss. If the subject is looking right or left, Provide looking space in the direction the subject is glancing. Don't center the subject in the frame. Try to equalize differences in the height of subjects by using a better camera angle or a riser or platform for the shorter subject. Use the camera angle needed to convey the right image. Don't shoot down on the subject unless you want to reflect a lack of power, authority, or dominance. And don't leave excessive empty screen space, particularly in the center. If you frame the right and left edges of the shot, you may attract the viewer's attention to the center background. Excessive movement by one subject may draw the viewer's attention away from the other subject, who may be the real focal point of the shot. Frame the shot to eliminate the moving subject, leaving the person doing the talking as the dominant subject. You now have been exposed to the basic information needed to operate the ENG EFP system. Remember, different cameras are designed to do different things, but all of them have some basic common functions. 
The library may provide additional information on television systems and television production. For a review of the information presented, we suggest you view the tape a second time, paying particular attention to those areas you had difficulty with. Then view it again if needed and take notes for later reference.